What are you doing? Keeping score. What's the game? It's called Who's Helping Who? See the, the marks here under my name? There are the points I've gotten so far for helping you break up Joe and Karen. Here's one for planting red panties in Joe's car, and another for telling Karen that Joe has a secret life, and another for telling Joe about my kissing Karen. Now, let's see here. How many points have you racked up for helping me bring down Chris Ramsey? Hmm, nothing. Who planted the bug in Chris's apartment? Me. Who posed as Marsha Cooper so we could raid Julie's bank account to get the money to fool Chris? Me, again. <laughs> You lost those points when you sold me out to Chris Ramsey. I did not sell you out, Frank. The hell you didn't. You told him that I blackmailed you into posing as Marsha Cooper. Chris found out about the con. I had to give him a good reason why I did it, so he would trust me again. And what if Chris decides to tell Julie about what happened? If she blows the whistle, I'm screwed. Chris won't do that. The point is, you owe me. What do you want? We need to find out another way to bring down Chris Ramsey. I want you to make a new friend. Who? The one woman that he is genuinely infatuated with. Eve Lambert. How's he doing? Uh, BP is 100 over 80. Vitals are good. He slept fairly well during the night. Were you here all night? Yes. Well, you could probably... Use some coffee or a bagel. You must be exhausted. Well, Sebastian should be regaining consciousness any moment now. I don't want to leave to go to the cafeteria. I think the cafeteria has come to you. I'll be right back. Take your time. <clears throat> Thought you could use a little go power. Thank you. How's he doing? He's stable. Good. You did great in the OR. It's an interesting surgery. Good learning opportunity. You saved his life. It was my job. Considering everything that's happened between us. I... Ellen. Sebastian's asking for you. I guess I should... Yeah, go on, go on. Hey. Is this yeah. heaven? Because I see an angel. <laughs> you're in the ICU. And you're doing fine. I could see it in your smile. The surgery, it went better than expected. They bought us some time together? Yes. They did. Danny's a good kid. He, he just needs a, a fair shot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Just give him a job. Give him a job, and, and if anything goes wrong and you lose money, I'll reimburse you. How about that? All right, thanks, Carl. Danny Glass, I'll, I'll send him over. Okay. Good. Thanks, bye. Who was that? Oh, this guy I know. I'm trying to get one of these teenage kids that I've been working with a job. He needs a his life around. Part of your community service hours, huh? No, not exactly. I'm, uh, I'm done with that. What? You're done with it? How? Well, I've been working day and night to clean the slate so that Lucy and I can get to New York. Can't tell you how proud I am of you for taking this service work so seriously. Well, thanks for the kick in the pants you gave me, you know. I needed it. Well, 
What do you hear about New York? Well, this guy I hired went down to Indonesia, and he's got some proof that Bordiso is the one that hired those kids to work in the factory. That's good news. Yeah. So he's going to fly into New York tomorrow. Lucy and I are going to meet him there. She's already booked some television time. We're going to go on TV and expose Bordizo for the rat that he is. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to wait. Hello? What? All right, listen. Tell him not to worry. Tell him I'll take care of everything. Thanks. So what's the matter? If you're looking for Chris, I think he's in exam room one, but the front desk nurse will know. Actually, I was looking for you. Oh. I want your advice on a gift for Chris. Oh, what's the occasion? He's been so sweet to me lately, and I wanted to show my appreciation. Oh, well, that's nice. Um, give him a box of chocolates or something. Well, actually, I, I was thinking of something a little more personal. Such as? Do you know of any particular CDs he may like, or...? No, no, nothing comes to mind. Can you think of anything else you may care for? I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Well, Eve, it seems to me that you're Chris's closest friend. And getting to know you better would really help me get to know him better. And, well, this is a really long way of saying I would love to buy you lunch. Oh. Okay. Great. How about today? I, uh, don't have time. Okay, well, how about tomorrow? Obstructed bow at 7.30, and who knows how long that'll take. <laughs> well, whenever, then. Okay, yeah. Whenever. Dr. Bye. Mullins, Dr. Christopher Mullins, to Courtney? Hey, I thought Hi. that was you. What are you doing here? Looking for you, of course. Well, I'm glad you came by. You know, I've been concerned about you since you told me that, uh... Frank's been blackmailing you. Oh, I've been able to handle Frank. And I really don't like the idea of you being in the house with him. I want you out of there as soon as possible. Chris, Chris, I can't do that. Neil loves it there, and with all the instability in his life, I, I couldn't possibly move him out of his house right now. Well, Courtney, I hate the idea of you living in the same house with this guy. Well, I'm not there right now. I'm with you. Buy me some coffee. That's my favorite patient feeling. I feel like I went ten rounds with Muhammad Ali in his prime. <laughs> really? Only ten? I want to thank you. Well, you can thank me when you're out of ICU. Ellen told me that the surgery went well, and I suspect you were largely responsible. It was a group effort. If you were going to single out someone, it wouldn't be me. Who? Matt Harmon. When he was stitching up your aortic tear, he noticed a second leak. And if he hadn't noticed the second leak, you wouldn't have made it through the night. So I owe my life to the man who has the least reasons for saving? You deserve a rest. You should get some sleep, too. I'm fine. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Sebastian wants to see you. Okay. Oh, no, not you, Ellen. Sebastian wants to see you, Matt. You wanted to see me? I want to thank you for saving my life. I was just one member of the surgical team. Eve told me that you spotted the second aortic leak. Well, it's just what any other doctor would do in this situation. But you're not any doctor, and I'm not any patient. Well, I think a good doctor always leaves his or her personal feelings outside the operating room. I would think in different circumstances, we might be friends. Well, these are the circumstances. We're in love with the same woman. And you put me back in the running. The doctor part of me is gratified the surgery went well. The other part of me thinks you might want to double check your painkillers before you take them. <laughs> I hear you. But if it's any consolation, you and Ellen will have many years together after I'm gone. I've learned the hard way that life is way too unpredictable to spend it waiting for something to happen. 
I can't let Ellen go now that I've come this far. Just don't try to justify your actions to yourself by saying, well, it's okay. Because Ellen will go back to Matt when I'm gone. See, by leaving with you, she's making a statement to me. And if our positions were switched, if I was the one that was trying to get Ellen to leave you for me, even if it was only for a weekend, well, I have no doubt that you would be as angry with her decision as I am right now. And if our positions were switched, I have no doubt that you would still ask her to go. Ellen. Hey, listen, I heard about this in surgery. I came right over. What's going on? What's happened with him? He, he, it was touch and go for a while, but he came through it very well. Oh. That's so good. Yes, as a matter of fact, the surgery went so well that there's now an excellent chance that Sebastian may live as much as a year longer than expected. Wow, that, that's so terrific. You know, you don't look all that thrilled, though. I am, for Sebastian. Ah, uh, I am sensing this is something about Matt, too, huh? Matt's the one that performed the surgery. Matt? Matt actually did that? He saved Sebastian's life. Wow. You know, I, I can't get over that. This world is so filled with so much irony, isn't it? Oh. You have no idea. Matt and I broke up yesterday. What? What, what happened? I told him I was going to New Orleans with Sebastian. I tried to make Matt understand that it didn't mean I loved him any less, but he said he was not going to be waiting for me when I got back. I, I'm, I am so sorry that happened. I'm really sorry. You know, if Sebastian had never come, I would never have been faced with his choice. Or if he'd come and he wasn't dying, I would have had time to sort out how I feel about him. But there was no time. I had to make a choice. Yeah, so I get it. Now you're not so sure you've made the right choice. I feel like I'm being torn in two because I care so much for the both of them. Oh, boy. Okay, listen, I'm, I'm supposed to be on my way over to meet Felicia for lunch, but I'm going to call her on my little phone right here and tell her I'm not coming. No, 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 no. Don't do that. But, Ellen, I, I want to The truth is, Lucy, there is no way to know what the right decision is. I've hurt Matt terribly. But Sebastian is dying. I lost that connection with him once. I don't want to do it again. He's a, he's a good kid, no? I got him a job. Now, this job is going to go away if this thing goes to trial. Yeah, I know, but can you do something before the arraignment? Come on. Come on, do me a favor. Oh, yeah, right, okay. Thanks, Garcia. Bye. Cops. What'd Garcia say? Nothing. There's nothing he can do. Hi, Gail. Hi, sweetheart. What's the matter? Oh, uh, one of these teenage kids I've been working with just got himself arrested. Oh. Well, I, I'm sure you'll find a way to help him out. Maybe. Maybe. So what's up? Well, I just wondered if there were any special instructions for Serena while you're in New York. I may not be going. What do you mean you may not be going? You've got to go to get the drop on Bordizo. Yeah, I know, Lee, but with this kid's record, if I don't help him, eventually he's going to end up in Sing Sing. Hey, you know, I've uh, been thinking about your predicament. What predicament? With Frank, you have to do something. I understand that you, you can't move out of the Scanlon house, but you have to report him to the police. No. He's been blackmailing you. That's a felony. I can't go to the police. Frank knows I didn't report the money from the Canellas payoff to the IRS. He'll go to the IRS, and I'll end up in jail. Now, it's not too late to report that income. Of course it is. No, it isn't. All you have to do is file an amended return. And pay the tax. And pay the penalties. Do you really want me to pay that? Why not? You can afford it now. Come on, why cheat when you don't have to? Besides, those, those taxes, they go to pay for roads and schools and hospitals. When did you become such a law-abiding citizen? <laughs> Look, I know I've bent a few rules here. But I draw the line at blackmail. And what Frank did to you is despicable. It's your duty to put him behind bars.
Marty, look, as long as I'm here, why don't I take Serena to dinner, and I'll give you a little more time to work on this young man's case. Thanks. Take her for some stone crabs, all right? Okay. I'm going to call Lucy and tell her this trip is off. I got a break in my schedule. I can handle Danny's arraignment. I can't ask you to do that. You want to help? So do I. I promise you, I won't let Danny or you down. He's going to get a great lawyer. Well, you need to get me up to speed. Let's get to work. Huh? Huh. Hey. Uh, Ooh, you look beat. Yeah, I am. My neck is killing me. Come here, turn around. Oh. Oh. There he is. Thank you. That feels great. <laughs> You've had a rough 24 hours, haven't you? Why don't you go home? No, uh, I'm waiting for Sebastian's test results. I want to see what they are. Helen's on pins and needles. <laughs> you don't actually expect me to care, do you? Oh, come on. That business with Matt and Ellen in the Quartermain Award was nearly a year ago. Hmm. Haven't you given up on that yet? I like to hold a grudge. Dr. Smith. Yeah, well, you better hope Frank Scanlon doesn't feel the same way, because if anyone has a reason to hold a grudge against you, it's Frank. Yeah, well, Frank Scanlon is a loser. Just made his last mistake. What happened? He's blackmailing Courtney to pull in some sort of scam, and I'm going to make him pay for it. Who told you that? Courtney. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A few days ago, I asked you about Courtney, and you said, Courtney who? Now, all of a sudden, you're her white knight? I thought you didn't trust anyone. I don't. Except you, of course. What about Courtney? The jury's still out on her. How'd it go with Eve? Any bonding? Oh, I'm working on it. Uh, you didn't ask her out to lunch or dinner or something? Well, she's not exactly the friendliest person in the world. At least not to me. What aren't you telling me? I ran into Chris at the hospital. And? And he's furious that you blackmailed me into posing as Marsha Cooper. And? He wants me to report you to the police. What? Oh, that son of a... This is all your fault. You got me into this, and you had better get me out. Are those Sebastian's test results? Yes. I'm sorry. The surgery corrected the ascending aortic aneurysm, but nothing could correct the problem the way we had hoped. We bought Sebastian a little bit of time, but not a year. Not anything close to that. A month. Maybe two, before something like this happens again. <sighs> Maybe I should go tell him. No, no, um, let me, please. Yeah, go ahead.
It didn't work, did it? <laughs> I thought finding you would make the world stop. But I guess that's too much even for you. However much time we have, we're gonna make the most of it. Tonight, as time heal all wounds, Drew's going to his ex fiancee's wedding, and he's not so sure on the Drew Carey Show. Then Norm ends up in bed with his best friend, Lori. Will it be a huge mistake? Watch the Norm Show, ABC tonight.